Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Today I'd like to show you how to make a paper nose cone. Now a lot of schools like to make paper nose cones for their rockets and um, actually using paper is, is more work than it's worth in my opinion. Now I know a lot of schools are very um, cost conscious um, and so they like to use paper whenever possible. Um, but if you're on a time crunch, you definitely want to use like a balsa nose cone or a plastic nose cone. Um, the, the problem with paper um, is that you're not going to get a perfect looking nose cone. You can see there's ridges and everything that, like that on this one here. Um, to start, um, this is what we're going to end up with today. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how to make a nose cone like this. Um, as you can see, it's, um, it's got a, a shoulder, um, and that's a tube coupler. And then the, the rest of it is just paper, just uh, ordinary notebook paper or, or copy paper. Um, to start, um, we're going to go into RockSim um, because we need to create a transition section that's going to create the, the actual conical shape. Um, and RockSim is best for doing that. So I'm going into the computer now, and uh, when you first start RockSim, um, I'm starting a new design. Um, I'm just going to call it conical nose. And I really, I'm just going to go right into the, the design components. And of the components, I'm going to choose a transition. I'm not going to choose a nose cone, even though this is a nose cone. Um, I'm going to choose a transition and I'm going to cancel out of the database. And the reason for this is um, Roxim doesn't make nose cone templates, but it does make transition templates. Um, so basically a nose cone is just like a transition. Um, so first I want to select the diameter. Now this diameter, this is a um, 29 millimeter tube. So I'm going to go, into the, um, go to the shoulder tab and I'm going to choose a compatible body tube for the rear shoulder. And it's going to be 29 millimeter thin wall. You know, click OK, and it throws a shoulder on there. Now, the next part we're going to do is we want to change the shape to conical. Um, the front diameter, Roxim won't allow you to make a transition with a zero front diameter. It's got to be a number, but it, it can be very, very tiny. Um, so I'm going to make it 0 0.001 inches. And then the length of this nose cone, uh, I'm going to make a three inch long nose cone. And you can see in Roxim that it's a pretty pointy nose cone. Um, the di that front diameter is so small that it almost does come to a point. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, next, I want to make sure that the material is paper. The construction is going to be set to hollow. And the thickness is going to be, the thickness of a sheet of paper is 0 0.006 inches. And just hit the tab. And the other thing that you need to do to be able to export out a template, because right now Roxim won't export out this template, and that's because it's got a shoulder on it. Um, so we're going to set the shoulder. We're going to clear it. So clear rear shoulder values. Okay. Um, at this point, um, Roxim can print it out. So there's, there's three criteria to print out a transition uh, template um, like this one here. Um, one is it's got to be hollow. Makes sense, doesn't it? Um, it's got to have um, no shoulder on it and it's got to be set to conical. It can't be any other shape. Um, and then I'm going to go and export template. And I'm going to call it transition and I'm just going to throw it on my desktop it's going to be called transition.svg. And when it's done, it uh, gives you this message saying that it did export. And I'm going to say OK. Um, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that template. Um, we could print it out right now, or but I want to do a little bit of uh, massaging it. I want to change a couple of things on this. Um, actually, this nose cone is actually two parts, so actually I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate it on one sheet of paper. That saves me from uh, printing multiple sheets. So I'm going to close out Roxim here. And find my transition. 
and I'm opening this up in a vector program and I'm using Adobe Illustrator. You can also use uh, Inkscape, which is a free one that works on Windows or Mac. Um, a Corel Draw should work too. Um, it's got to be a vector drawing program. And when you open it up, um, it's going to look like this. And right now it's got a, a gray template. And I'm going to change that color. I'm going to make it uh, white on the inside. Okay, so there is the transition. I could, like I said, I could print this out, but one of the first things I want to do is um, I'm going to move it up here and make sure my paper is set to the right size. Um, it's going to be a letter size. Okay. Um, I want to add an overlap uh, to make gluing it easier. So I'm just going to draw some lines here. Let me uh, zoom in on this for you. Okay, I'm just going to kind of extend this down here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then I'm just going to draw a line over, over that way. Um, the next thing I want to do is rolling these transitions because it comes to a, a, such a point is very hard. And this is actually going to be in two layers. Um, we're going to make an inner layer and then we're going to slide an outer layer over the top of this. And on the inner layer, I'm going to get rid of the point. Um, and that's really easy to do. I'll just go and draw a circle from the very tip of it right here. And I'll just drag it out. Um, and I want it to be approximately one inch. So that's a one inch diameter circle there on my screen. Um, and this is basically all we need for this inner part. Um, let me back out of here. Now I'm going to duplicate this. And I just bring it down here. Now the outer transition, because it slides over the top, um, if we if we just slid it just like this, it would it would be too short. So I need to lengthen it a little bit. Um, so basically, I'm just going to take this. Oops, I didn't duplicate it. Select everything. Move that one back up there. Okay, so I'm going to take this is the one I'm going to duplicate or uh, resize. I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to extend it out about a sixteenth of an inch, and that's pretty much all it's going to need. Sixteenth of an inch past the outside perimeter over here. And that's good. Um, now the other thing that you'll notice about paper is that paper has a grain direction. Um, I don't have a piece of paper out here right now. But if you take paper and you tear it one way, it tears re real easily. But if you turn it clockwise 90 degrees and then try tearing it, you get a very jagged edge. Basically, you're, you're tearing across the grain instead of with the grain. Um, and when you make these transitions, it really helps to go with the grain. Now, on a piece of paper, the grain runs top to bottom. So I'm going to take both of these transitions, and I want to just rotate them around so they, uh, the point is almost straight up and down. Um, and so you don't have to be perfect about this. <clears throat> you can see what I did there. See now this point is almost, it kind of runs parallel with the, with the grain of the paper. And I can do the same with this one down here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, one last thing I want to do before I print this out is I want to draw a second line from here, from the vertex, just out anywhere to the perimeter. And the reason for this, I'll, I'll tell you about later, but this little line will be our guideline for lining up our two pieces of paper. Okay, so at this point, this is what my layout looks like, and I can just go ahead and print it out. And I'm going to pause here, go ahead and print that out, and then we'll start in on the construction.